I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cortright, and I am here with the one, the only super millennial, David Barreto. How you doing, son? How's everything going? Doing good. How you doing? Very good. I didn't see much of you this week. No, it's been yeah. busy. Because I think you're trying to kill me. You Just think, a little bit. Keep pushing, buddy. I'll see if you can break me. Is hey, this a contest see. or something we're doing? Hey, I got to take the belt from you somehow. That's it. Somebody's got to take the belt. So, this week, our topic has been ending struggle. So, on Motivational Monday, we talked about why we struggle. Tuesday's Health Huddles, we discuss ending our struggle with our health. On Wednesday's Meeting of Minds, we talked about our struggle with change. And today's Connection Thursday, let's talk about ending struggle. So we discussed Monday that the definition of struggle is the forceful or violent efforts to get free from restraint or constriction. Since this is Thursday, David, let's dive deep into this definition. Anything that requires force is an egoic energy. And this energy is derived from the level one survival energies. So these energies of shame, guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, and pride are the survival energies. They make up the ego. So we all struggle. Every single one of us struggle. And each struggle will begin with the base level one energy, fear. So fear is the energy that protects the programs of the subconscious mind. And this is what makes up the construct of the ego. If our struggle is with something from the past, the energies will go from fear and travel down. So it'll kick off with 100 fear. They'll start to struggle. And then it'll drop to 75 grief. So in fear, we're anxious, overwhelmed, and stressed. That's when we feel stressed. Then we drop to 75 grief. Now we feel cheated, disappointed, and sad. Then we drop to 50 apathy. Now we're stuck, indecisive, and discouraged. Then it drops to 30 guilt. Now we feel failure, hopeless, and defeated. And then finally, lower than 30 is shame. Now we feel unworthy, empty, and broken. Now... If our struggle is with something in the future, the energy will begin at the base energy of fear and travel up. So it starts at 100 fear, where again, we're anxious, overwhelmed, we feel stressed. Then it'll jump to 125 desire. This is when we become obsessed, frustrated, and driven. Then it can jump to 150 anger. And this could be aggressive, resistant, resentful. And then 175 pride, and in pride, that is the energy of the ego and you're aloof, opinionated, and closed. So these are the energies of the ego and the survival force level one energies. So if the definition of struggle is the forceful efforts to get free from restraint or constriction, we must come to the conclusion that all struggle is that of the ego. Safe enough to say You're that. all right with that? I, I think so. That was that was well put together, wasn't it? Not, <laughs> bad for, not bad for a rookie, huh? And if this is true, if all struggle is of the ego, and this is true, and we split the I of identification and the I of presence, we get a clear picture that we do not struggle. All struggle comes from force. So all struggle is created from the I of identification. When you say I am this or that, that is an identification. It's the ego. All struggle is created either in the past or the future. It's never, we never struggle with the I of presence, which is you. So struggle comes from the stories which support the programs within the cage. And this makes up the ego. Thus, you ready? Struggle is an illusion. 
Well, I would think struggle is very stressful, and if stress is an illusion, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Did you just put me in my place? Somehow you did that, right? So yesterday, remember, we talked about our struggle with change, right? We must begin to realize that everything, and I mean everything, is changing. At all times, everything is changing. All matter, forces, and mental states are always in the process of changing. We see that nothing is. Everything is becoming and changing. Nothing stands still. Everything is being born, growing, and then dying. The very instant a thing reaches its height, it must begin its decline. This is life. This is the way it works. Thus, there is no reality, enduring quality, fixity, or substantial substantial purpose in anything. Nothing is permanent. It's not permanent, but change. That's the only thing that is real is it will change. All things evolve from other things and resolve into other things. The pendulum is always swinging with a constant flow of action and reaction. Inflow and outflow, building up and tearing down, creation and destruction, birth, growth, and death. This is the way life works. And I don't care if it's a business. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's a person. I don't care if it's something you're working on. It has to have a beginning. It has to have a growth period. And it has to have an end. So all struggle is actually born out of the ignorance that all things have a life cycle. It's just ignorant. We don't realize this. And all struggle ends when we realize we don't really struggle. Are you with me? You know it's going to go crazy right now. Uh, yeah. You're so funny. When I start to get deep, you just shake your head. Like, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. Nothing? I got the blinders on. <laughs> you do have the blinders on. So here we go. You are, you are, David, the eye of presence. That is the heart you are not the eye of identification that builds our construct of the ego, which is the head. So to end struggle, we must connect to the eye of presence, which is our true self. And this starts and ends with our connection to the heart. So understand this because it's important. The head holds our tribalization programs. It holds our habits. It's where the ego lives. The eye of the head is and can only be identified with the past or the future. Only way. Now, the voice in the head, the ego, some of us have more than one. So we have some going on. I always think about Linda with six voices in her head. The voice in the head or the voices in the head, the ego is telling you stories. If these stories become the dominant consciousness, we will have struggle and this becomes a fight. This is what happens. Things start to become a fight. The voice from the heart is what's called that small, still voice, your intuition. The difference is it's calm, it's peaceful, it's knowing. When we are born, we do not struggle for we are born in heart and programmed to the head. Little baby Mary she had no struggles at this event, right? <laughs> and by the way, her name is Ariel, but I always, we're going to keep her called Mary Mary forever now, right? Yeah. And so because I, I just think it's the right thing. So this programming that we're talking about becomes our identity. And this identity cuts us off from the heart. And this is where we begin to struggle. We have a disrupt in energy. So it's here when all our wants are created. So we have the ego is built from the wants. We have the want of approval. This leads us to compete and seek to be better. This puts off happiness and success to the future. So we struggle. The eye of presence is disconnected. The want of belonging tells us stories that we are separate from others, putting everything with the identification of categories of good and bad, 
The eye of presence, again, is disconnected. So we have struggle. The want of control tells us to fight and force life so we can escape or we can be stuck in our past or we can build a promising future. So we're trying to escape from our past or we're trying to build something in the future. Now we fight change so we struggle with life. The eye of presence is disconnected and we struggle. The want of security tells us that we must live in fear and stress. People think that stress is normal. We hear it all the time, right? Yeah. All the time. Day to day, it's it, it's expected almost. But when we speak and we go out there and nobody's ever heard it before, the first thing, but what's that? Well, they always tell us, but everybody has stress. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> really, everybody don't have stress. It's your concept that causes stress. And this is the want of security. And it tells us that we must live in fear and stress, that we must protect what is ours. The biggest thing we protect is the I of identification, our self-concept, our ego. If I have this job, I'm secure. If I have this much money, I'm secure. If I'm in this relationship, I am secure. All these I's are identification. And the I of presence is disconnected and we struggle. So struggle ends when we open understand and connect to the eye of presence and the heart. So the head, as I've said in the past episodes, is important. It is where we set goals, gain knowledge, get clarity, and hold our habits. The challenge for each of us is that the head works off the programming it has. And none of us set up our original programming. Not a single person set up their original programming. So this programming determines the state or energy you live in. So last week we talked about the substance. You allowed me to put that episode out. Thank you. So we'll call it the substance, God, universe, the quantum, whatever we want to call it, energy. We can call it that. Interacts directly with the level of this programming that we hold in the head. It interacts no more or no less. So here's a deep truth. Nothing can rise higher than its source. I will repeat it. Nothing can rise higher than its source. So if we're talking quantum and we want to go science, the quantum can only interact with a source. So a rock is interacting with the energy of a rock. The quantum can't turn the rock into a dog. Does that make sense to you? The quantum interacts, the tree has a source. The quantum or God can only interact with that source. No more, no less, it's a tree. Does that make sense to you? So the seed grows into a tree. The quantum is interacting with the source. So you know what the human being source is? Your state is your source. So if we take substance, God, universe, quantum, you can only... It can only work with you according to the level you live. The substance God universe quantum has given us something very special, David. You know what that is? Free will. Absolutely free will. (laughs) I know you're afraid to answer, but it's absolutely free will. So if your state is grief and apathy, the substance can only work with grief and and apathy. Nothing can rise higher than its source. That's your source. That's your energy. So it has to keep bringing, you can win a million dollars, but the substance, God, can only work with grief and apathy, and you'll lose a million dollars every time. So nothing can rise higher than its source. We are source. We are the source. We always think God's the source. No, he gave us free will. We're the source. God works through our state. And substance brings forth whatever our source allows. No more, no less. You with me? Yeah. I'm pretty You're actually there. with me. You're scaring me. So the source we are is demonstrated to the substance by our feelings and thoughts, which come from our programs. That's what makes human beings differently. We interact with the source, 
All right, we, I'm sorry, we interact as a source and our source interacts with the substance according to our feelings and thoughts. That's how God works with us. Please, if I go over the edge, Dave, bring me back, okay? You don't understand something. So if your thoughts and feelings are of lack and struggle, you must experience lack and struggle. There's no other way. Nothing can rise higher than its source. Our state is our source. The substance, quantum, God, whatever we want to call it, interacts with our feelings and thoughts. We're the source. These come from the state we live in. Our source is our energy and our state. Now, listen. Please listen carefully. There is nothing more important in your life. Nothing is more important in your life than your personal growth. Nothing. So people are praying every single day for change. Please help me get better. Please help me make more money. Please help me get that job. Please help me get that relationship. And you're praying as a beggar because God can only bring in what level you are and your source. It can only work through your source. So the level of one's personal growth at any given time, will determine their level of success. I've said it a million times. Nothing can rise higher than its source. Nothing. So we're taking this a little deep. It is Thursday. I'm allowed. And we look at it. So let's talk about it. So struggle ends as we let go of the programming of the head. Because your source is determined by the state you live in, which is determined by the level of energy your ego is, the programs you hold in the cage. Right? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's So we're the source. And the substance works with that source. So, like, and that's with everything, by the way. The dog's not going to turn into a cat. He's got the, his Thank source God. is a dog, right? But you understand what I'm saying, right? It just can't happen. But a rock also has energy. A rock can't turn into a tree. The substance can only work with the source. The energy of the rock is the rock. That's all it can do. It's still you. If you go in there, the molecules are moving and everything is going just like anything else. That's quantum physics, people. That is God's science. So the struggle ends when we let go of the programming of the head and we begin to install new programs or habits, whatever you want to call them, and then get clear what we want. That means that we get clarity. We set the goals. We know what we want. But then in order to end struggle, we must connect from the head to the heart. That's where struggle ends. Now, the heart holds our deep spiritual values. It uses the tools of imagination, faith, and gratitude in order to build integrity of action in the hand. But the most important thing the heart holds is our true purpose in life. Everything comes from there. So if your goals, you know, your goals go from your head, right? And you set what you want. If it doesn't match your heart, what do you have? Struggle. You have conflict. You're struggling. So I'm going to get deeper into this next week. And we're going to start, we're going to have a discussion next week. Our focus is going to be a subject of connection. So that should be fun. Uh, but I would like to end this episode and clear up a few things about purpose. Okay. So I want you to understand how important purpose is. I can't stress it enough because purpose is how we connect to our heart. If you know your true purpose, you can do anything because then you also know when you're disconnected. That's what's important. So let's talk about that a little bit. Number one, the purpose is discovered. You don't decide this is going to be my purpose. Now you can decide your mission. So the purpose is discovered in the heart. The mission is set in the head. And you want your mission to match your heart, your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the way it works. That's number one. You're with me so far on that, right? Number two, purpose can be described in one or two words. It's not a long statement. Mission can be a long statement. Purpose is a word. You with me? You agree with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when, yeah. when I do the... The purpose and Exercises. values and yeah. beliefs and all that stuff. When somebody gives me a, 
a long-winded purpose. It's the I'm head. just like, stop. Stop. <laughs> what are you trying to do? What yeah. do you feel? You know? So we go in. And we have great exercises to discover this. We do this in our events. This is one of the first things we do in shift coaching. Because first we have to turn on the heart. Then we set the head. And then we open up the integrity of the hand. Head, heart, hand, you have success. So that's number three. You can describe, perp- or I'm sorry, number two. Purpose can be described in one word. Number three. Purpose is something you were born with. You know when we coach people and they discover their purpose, it's like something lights up in them. So I have a wonderful client, Jeff, and he's been he's been to our events and he's in our climber community and he's coaching now. And we discovered his purpose and just to watch, he goes, yeah, that's me. It's fun to watch that because the purpose will reveal itself. You don't try to create a purpose. You discover the purpose. It is what you were born with. Does that make sense to you, David? Yeah, most of the time when I find that people find their purpose, it's, it's almost like a flashback. It's beautiful. Of multiple yeah. moments that like, like most people don't remember a lot of things from either their childhood or things like that. When they think and they notice their purpose, they remember small key oh, events that yeah. weren't very impactful yes. but it shined through their purpose it they're like oh amazing. i remember in the sixth grade in this class totally and, true. And, and they find it and it's like oh i could think of a million times that happened yeah and i remember when you found yours it was like holy crap that's it right you knew that was it so number four purpose is what connects the head heart and hand so if you can you can set all the goals you want. You can do smart goal setting. You can do all that stuff. You are going to struggle and you are going to have stress and you are going to procrastinate and you are going to sabotage if you don't connect what you want to the heart and the purpose because that connects the hand. When you have head, heart, and hand, you create volition. You stop wishing your life will change. You stop wanting your life to change. You even stop intending your life to change and you hit volition and life changes. Because when you're on purpose and you have heart, that's a strong energy of action. And the action changes. When you just have goals and head and you go to hand, you're forcing life. You're grinding life. You're pushing life. You're struggling. When you go from head, heart to hand, you flow. And now you might work hard. I'm not saying you're not going to work hard or, or long or put time in. But now you do it without stress and you're in service. It's all about connecting. You go back to your childhood. Children are connected, right? And then number five. This is one of the most important things I probably have taught in a long time is it's the purpose pendulum. The purpose pendulum, because everything has a law of polarity, will determine if the I of presence, which is the heart, is connected or the I identification, the head, is running things. And so... It's easy to know. So I've got some purposes that we find. I've got them here. And so let's talk about some of what we have, okay? So the purpose of growth. Your pendulum is lack. The moment, growth is a very interesting purpose too because growth, most people are stuck inside the cage, right? Their comfort zone. And what we want to do is push them out of the cage so they get uncomfortable and grow. Well, growth people are the opposite. They live outside the cage. They're the ones with the shiny butterflies, grabbing us, no focus. They're all over the place. Why? Because they're comfortable outside the cage. They're good. But what is their Achilles? Their pendulum which swings growth as the heart to the head is lack. The moment they feel any lack, they're done. That means the head starts running things and they cut off the heart. Energy, which is my purpose, what, what, what it's very closely to a growth purpose but it's stagnation. So if things start stagnating, so I had to really learn how to go through plateaus because in a plateau, things stagnate, right? And I had to be comfortable with stagnation and make sure I had faith going that we just keep working and things work out. It happened with the podcast, remember? You told me, I go, well, we got to push it. We got to, you go, no, 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 it'll come. And boom, you were right. Here come all the numbers. But we just stayed steady. But that's my, so when I'm in stagnation and I feel like we're stagnated, I'm in the head. You don't like that energy when I'm there, right? No. Okay. Jesus, no. You're not supposed to laugh. It's pretty. It's a whole nother episode. It's a whole, you don't (laughs) like that guy. So, but I know that when that kicks in, I know I'm disconnected. 
Can and I I'll say it doesn't it. happen very often. But it, when it does, it does. So, inspire is a purpose, and that happens to be your purpose, inspire. When you are disconnected, when the heart's turned on, it's inspire, you're in apathy energy. You go into a type of a depression. And apathy energy is the I can't energy. It's the energy where you feel like you're kind of stuck. I can't, you're stuck, you're unfocused, you're drained. That's what happens. So when you feel that way, David, if you feel that way, you know you need to sit down and look at Nelson because Nelson's running the show. It's not you. You see that awareness is powerful, right? So freedom, a lot of freedom people out there and everybody's got the freedom value. But when you have freedom as a purpose, your pendulum is control. The moment you try to control everything to want to control, you're screwed. <laughs> it's going to tell you that freedom is in the heart. And the moment you go to the head and try to control anything, you cut off the heart. It's big. Love. People with a purpose of love. And it's hate is the pendulum. But hate has many levels. Hate can be dislike, don't really like that person. <laughs> All of those things are still hate. And they will connect you. Love is an energy. It's a very high, strong energy. But it's an energy of being free, light, fulfilled, quiet. You have serenity. So if you have disrupt and you're, you're hating something, that means if you hate something. I hate fish. Well, guess what you just did? You just cut your heart off. You see how it works? So you disconnect it. Connection. Well, connection's kind of easy. Connection is the heart. That's the purpose. It's disconnection. <laughs> it's like, it really is. So what does that mean? That means in connection, when you're disconnected, it's anytime you're in the red zone energies. It doesn't matter which energy it is. That's almost the same with energy and stagnation. If I'm in that energy, I know I'm stagnated. And so if I'm negative, I know that's happening. So with connection, if you are in pride, anger, desire, fear, grief, apathy, guilt, you won't be in shame. Usually connection people aren't very, You are disconnected. So you'll know. If you're stressed, you're disconnected. You know that it's your, you know it's the eye of identification your head is taking over. Joy, great purpose. The opposite is grief. So the pendulum swings when the heart's there and it's joy, it's open, it's beautiful, it's centered, it's, it's one. But when it goes into grief, grief can be cheated, disappointed, you feel unloved, sadness. Pity, regret, all of that cuts off the eye of presence in the heart and turns on the eye of identification. Integrity. When your integrity as a purpose, it's when you feel divided. So what does division look like? It's when you can't make a decision. You're divided. You have nothing. It's just like you're not sure to go this way. You're not sure to go that way. You feel you're in division. Integrity is action. It's action. It's moving. And so when you have a purpose of integrity, you got to be a, a go-to person. you got to be the guy that leads. They're usually very strong leaders. Courage. The purpose of courage, it's fear. It's really simple. And that one is when your eye of presence is, is the heart and you're in courage, the moment that you're in any type of fear, anything. You know, fear could be, you could be anxious. Remember, you could be doubt. You could be worry. It could be all the way to panic and terrify, but it also could be avoidance. That means that you have disconnected. And then last one I'm going to give you, and there's a couple more, but I'm going to give you truth. So if your purpose is truth, the I is when you're in truth, and this is usually very high spiritual people and stuff, they are disconnected. I have identification when they're in illusion. In other words, when they struggle <laughs> or they're stressed or they're things like that. So that's kind of what it looks like when we talk about it. So very quickly to end this episode, we want to talk about some of the things about purpose because it connects the heart. So one, purpose has to be discovered. Two, purpose can be described in one word. It should be described in one word. Three, purpose is something you were born with. You do not decide this is your purpose. You uncover it. Four, purpose is what connects the head, heart, and hand. And five, the purpose pendulum will determine if the eye of presence of the heart or the eye of identification, the head, is running things. And when you know this information, you will actually know when you're disconnected. So you know you're disconnected. So if you're so David, if you're kind of feeling apathy, like you just can't do it, it's too much, you feel a little depressed, you know that you're disconnected. It's not you. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, you you 
like it goes back to the whole uncomfortable thing. You yep. literally just feel distraught. You don't know why. And it, well, you really do, but you try to turn a blind eye to it almost because you want to, like you always say, getting streamed into the energy mm-hmm. and then you just don't want to accept that there's a different part of your pendulum. Yep. So you just live into that energy. It's almost like you go, like I said, you put on the blinders and you just live in this energy and you stay with it until you can break yourself off from it. And realize like, oh, I'm on the opposite side of the pendulum. My pendulum swing, I need yeah. to swing back. And it's literally, you can do that within that moment of Seconds. awareness. Seconds. And then saying, I'm no longer going to be blank. Yeah. And I let go of what caused it. And that's kind of what we do. So that's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.